Cheers, it's Suzanne A. Wells, and we have a super size sales video this time. We are looking at sales from September of 2018. If this is your first time watching this format, these sales are taken from my Facebook group, which there is a link below the video if you want to come check that out. And what we do here is once a month, Stephanie starts the thread. If you sold something for $100 or more, you post what you paid for the item, where you found it, um, and tell us a little bit about the item and show us what it sold for. But before we get into today's video, I just want to show you something really quick that I think you will like. Hey eBayers, I wanted to show you something I've created for the premium content library that is really going to help your eBay business. I think you're going to love this. These are thrift shopping lists. And I've got the first one ready. It's women's clothing brands. There are 29 items on the list so far. And I'll be creating these for all different categories for all different products. So what is it? It's a study guide designed to help you learn to source products faster. You get a visual along with estimated selling prices. And you can use this as an additional resource beyond videos to help sharpen your sourcing skills. I'm going to update these frequently so the information is always going to be current and you can download these, print them out, and learn what you want to learn. So if you don't want to learn women's clothing, that's fine. Don't print that one out. Don't worry about it. Go on to something else. Now how do you use these? This is a quick way to learn labels, logos, value of an item, and specific criteria to help you pick more profitable items to sell. Again, you can print these out and you can make your own notebook so it's a study guide rather than just watching videos because I know that videos take time to watch you have to be in a place where you can listen to them watch them and pay attention and this way you can create a booklet that you can flip through look at pictures and just study you can pick it up study it a few minutes here and there put it by your bed put it in the TV room whatever you want to do and really importantly here it's going to be updated frequently so you're going to get current information there's a lot of outdated information on the internet and let me tell you as a content creator it's really hard to keep everything current in the world of eBay because it changes so much so um, that's what this is going to address I can update these and keep things current so that it's not three years old the items on here will be things that make sense at whatever point you're at in the future. They're going to be in different categories, different types of products. So the best thing I can compare this to is Cliff's Notes from high school where you get a shortened version of whatever information is. So think of this as your Cliff Notes for thrift shopping for eBay. A closer look at the format, you'll see the update date on the top left so whenever you go to print these out you'll know how recently it was updated there's going to be a column with an image of the label if it's clothing or a logo or an actual picture of the item whatever it is to help you get a visual of what you need to look for in a thrift store garage sales estate sales that kind of thing a best case scenario for pricing and then you'll get a realistic price of what you can realistically expect when that item sells. Some specific criteria about exactly what to look for. Sizes, colors, fabrics, designs. Um, so you'll know which ones to pick that are going to make you the most money. And then more details if there's anything else that I can think of to help you make a buying decision about these items. So I'm really excited about being able to put these together. Um, this again is coming from years and years of selling on eBay as well as being plugged into what's going on now because that's really important. Um, that's why you're watching these videos is because you want to know what's going on now. What is selling now? That's what matters, not what happened three, four, five, ten years ago. So come on over to the premium content library it's only $20 a month. You get access to this information and everything else that's in there as well as 
unlimited email support whenever you have a question or problem you can email me to help you um, there will be more of these lists coming so stay tuned and now let's get into today's video okay so let's get started with the supersize sales we're gonna start here with crystal who bought this item for five dollars at a hospice thrift store listed it for hundred and nineteen ninety nine and it sold for best offer of a hundred dollars in about two hours and it is a Sony cassette recorder so let's take a look at the listing here and we're gonna to go to the original item and here it is Sony cassette recorder tape recorder with original case box and paperwork as is so apparently there were some issues with this but doesn't matter it's sold anyway um, again it says down here this is being sold as is for parts repair only and she still got a hundred dollars for it so um, this is what you might call dead tech it's something that um, the technology is kind of outdated but that's okay people still want this stuff anyway so she's got all the instructions here the cords and the case and made some pretty quick money on that um, a testament to getting these things listed because you never know how quick they're gonna sell okay Amy paid three dollars at a church yard sale sold in five days for a hundred dollars okay and she showed us a screenshot here this is a vintage Z Cavarici jeans women's size 33 high waist so they're basically some vintage jeans um, vintage clothing is very popular 100 bucks and she paid how much three dollars sold in five days so there you go again a really quick sale and then we've got Amy again, paid $10 at an estate sale, sold for best offer of $100 plus shipping in about three months. So this was not as quick of a sale, but worth waiting for. This is a vintage Imperial Loden Fry Coat, West Germany, Munich, charcoal gray women's, $100. She took an offer of $100 even. And Donata here is telling us that Loden Fry is a very very expensive brand in Germany new ladies coats go from anything from euros 500 to 1600 new would definitely consider international shipping if you find another one and try an even higher price and I already know Amy does international shipping on her listings so there's a brand you might not be familiar with things get brought back to the US all the time or they get purchased um, internationally and shipped to the US so don't ever think oh I'm never gonna find that because you just don't know what's gonna pop up in front of you um, this happens all the time I get emails and messages from people that say oh I watched your video and saw such and such and I never would have known this if you hadn't put this in your video I never would have known what this was or to look for that so that's why I like doing these videos is they're very educational everybody can learn something okay Amy again paid ten dollars at the Korean church yard sale sold for ninety nine dollars plus shipping this one took a while about eight months I couldn't get photos good enough to show its beauty so this is some kind of um, three-in-one dress top set it's clothing so it's it's a set with different pieces and she sold that for $99 and it cost her 10 so you never know um, I know a lot of you have limits on how much you'll pay for things and it makes you nervous to go outside of that but you've got to look at the profit margin because it could be totally worth paying $10 for something if you can sell it for a hundred okay Nina paid $4.99 at Goodwill sold on a 10-day auction for two hundred and one dollars and fifty cents what is it a Louis Vuitton women's top shirt size large purple embellished so it's a shirt she bought a shirt for five bucks and sold it for 200 I mean eBay's not dead right <laughs> uh, this is crazy I love it when that happens all right Susan paid five dollars at st. Vinnie's thrift store listed on seven-day auction sold for 225 49 and it is a guitar 
vintage 1937 black supertone F33 Harmony Sears acoustic parlor guitar with Robin Hood. Wow, that's a great find. Five dollars, and she sold it for two hundred and twenty-five dollars. And she said the hardest part about it was she had to build a box, but that's okay. Um, you can Frankenstein boxes. That just means you're taping them together, uh, fashioning a box for what you need. Remember, you can always go to Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, and get moving boxes if you need something really big and cut it down to make a box. Um, you don't have to use priority boxes. You can use any box other than liquor boxes. Um, so just remember that options. And you know, if you sell something for two hundred dollars, you can spend four or five dollars on a box to ship it in. Uh, that's that's a justified expense. Okay, Nancy bought this at Goodwill for four ninety nine. Took best offer of one hundred forty dollars in just two weeks. Again, perfume. I love selling fragrances because um, a lot of these are discontinued or hard to find, and people just want it. So five bucks, and she turned that into one hundred forty dollars in just under two weeks. Great. Okay, Lisa. Urban. Partially worked tapestry paid ten dollars at an estate sale sold for a hundred and ten dollars plus shipping So let's take a look at this Yep, this needlework is great And remember I've got a needlework course in the premium library where you can learn all about it keywords what sells all of that stuff so this says tapestry embroidery kit fender stool Margaret Merton floral half finished so she obviously looked up or it's actually got on the printed on the fabric here the name of the design and the company that made the kit so yes people will buy partially worked needlework that's a thing again come to the premium library learn about that if you you're passing by stuff that you don't even know has value because you think your own what is the saying uh, your own thoughts are getting in your way um, you just you just never know um, so she bought that for ten dollars and sold for hundred and ten dollars plus shipping okay Lisa again paid ten dollars at a yard sale sold for best offer of a hundred dollars plus shipping Let's see what this is. A Woolrich? No, Golden Bear jacket, wool plaid, Native American Navajo blanket coat. That's really nice. So it's got the tag there, Golden Bear. That's something you don't see every day. And she paid $10 and sold it on best offer of $100. Perfect. Um, so let's just think about this for a second paid ten dollars at a yard sale so the person having the yard sale either didn't care to sell it on eBay didn't know how to sell it on eBay didn't want to take the time to sell it on eBay didn't want to hire somebody to sell it on eBay they just threw it in their yard sale for ten dollars and that's why eBay is always going to work is because there's so many people out there that just aren't going to learn how to do it. It's too much trouble. It's too hard. It's too complicated. They don't have time. And they just, they don't know what they're giving away. So then we come along as resellers and we're more educated. We study this. We learn what sells. And we can make a living doing this. So if you're new, just getting into eBay, or you start to lose the faith in eBay, just remember that. Um, this process goes on over and over and over again all the time and you just have to keep educating yourself on what you can resell because this is never going to stop people are never going to stop downsizing clearing out um, you know having estate sales garage sales giving stuff away all of that that is never going to stop okay Lisa again paid either five or ten dollars recently probably a church rummage sale sold for hundred and fifty dollars so Lisa has learned how to look for the high dollar items and maximize her time 
um, listing and sourcing rather than just being glued to the computer all the time listing 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 she's really maximized her time in what she's selling and if you look here is her store name if you want to go check out her store and see what else she sells um, that's one of the perks of <laughs> these videos is you can you can see who's being successful and go look at their stores and then learn from them so this item uh, these are some Western cowboy boots uh, the brand is Corral let's see if she has a picture of the logo um, it's kind of hard to tell the logo there but I guess it's on the bottom and these sold for $150 and she paid a maximum of $10 for these so way to go Lisa and then she's got some more paid four dollars at a school fundraiser sold for 150 plus shipping let's see what this is Norman Rockwell something Norman Rockwell visits a country school authorized reproduction framed print so I wonder how she knew this was an authorized reproduction it must say on oh there it is yep that's what that blue sticker is authorized reproductions artwork is um, artwork is hard to learn there's just a lot to it and there's a lot of details that you have to understand um, but it can be learned so she said again four dollars at a school fundraiser sold for hundred and fifty dollars plus shipping boy Lisa had a good month here's another one four dollars at a team fundraiser sale sold for hundred and fifty dollars plus shipping this is some other kind of is this needlework French cherub angel tapestry tassel pillow covering coat of arms and what she say she got for it hundred and fifty plus shipping what exactly is this doesn't say anything about needlework but it just looks um, funky and vintage and I guess it is handmade maybe it is needlepoint kind of hard to tell Let's see if she said anything about it yes there's some comments here okay what is a team fundraiser sale that's when sports team have like a garage sale okay here Judy says how did you know this had value Lisa said for four dollars I knew I at least get my money back on it and that's the perfect attitude is you know sometimes you don't you don't know but besides that my eye is always drawn toward tapestry items the handiwork is beautiful combined with the velvet backing and the tassel trim it just had a luxurious feel to it okay so go with your gut if it looks expensive feels expensive looks well made and it's cheap give it a try all right Lisa I've had a few supersize sales but this is my first supersize sale post I paid 50 cents at a garage sale sold in less than one hour for hundred and ten dollars with free shipping originally had 125 did sell similar and change the price to match current sold comps <laughs> this is a laundry product you guys um, bounce dryer bar outdoor fresh six month total two bars one holder free shipping so a discontinued item this is another thing you can learn about in the premium library or I keep a list of discontinued items to look for um, because you may not know what's out there and they sell for a lot of money this is the evidence of that um, there's some comments here below about the item but um, yeah crystal says yes they are discontinued I've sold several over the last few years they always sell fast and for good money so this may have been discontinued for a while but if it's been in somebody's laundry room and they haven't used it and then they have a garage sale or it's an estate sale or whatever um, these things can still end up out there where you can find them and um, laundry products don't expire so no matter how old it is it doesn't matter um, but can you imagine 50 cents for a laundry product and selling it within one hour 
for $110. Who does that? Who are these people buying these things is what I want to know. Um, because if it was discontinued, I would just like go find another thing to use. Um, that's just me. I'm not my customer. So here's proof that people <laughs> pay crazy money for stuff on eBay. Okay, Janine Allen, Joyce, best sale ever, paid $40 at Goodwill, took best offer of $700 in about two months later on Craigslist. Also listed on eBay, but got no offers. Braved the rains yesterday, courtesy of Hurricane Flo, to meet the buyer. What is this? Oh, medical grade shower commode chair. So, home health product. And yes, these can be very expensive. So, what she did... She found it at Goodwill, and she sold it locally. You can do that on Facebook. You can do it on Craigslist. Um, she also had it on eBay, but didn't get any offers, so she sold it recently, uh, sorry, locally, and turned $40 into $700, and that's just crazy. Um, so look at that medical equipment, home health stuff, at estate sales and yard sales, because um, that stuff is expensive. And, you know, sometimes people use these for a while when they're recovering from surgery and they don't need them anymore, so they'll stick them in their yard sale. And then, of course, if it's an estate sale and the person's passed away, there's lots of, um, can be lots of medical and health care products there, too. Don't be afraid of that stuff. Learn what it is because it can make you money. Um, some people feel weird about buying health care, medical stuff to, to resell, but, um, you know, obviously, if it's prescription medications, you can't do that, and CPAP machines, you cannot resell. But a lot of these other things, you can. The the wheelchairs and the little, um, the things that's like a walker, but you can also sit on it when you're shopping. You know, the, I, I don't know what that's called. It's like a hybrid thing, but it's a walker and a seat. Um, all kinds of stuff like that will sell. And just make sure it's allowed before you put it on eBay. If not, you can sell it locally. All right, Sarah paid a dollar at a garage sale and sold it in less than a month for $175. And this is vintage 1930s Goodyear Zeppelin Airship Dock Bank. So, oh, it's a it's like a point bank. Okay. Joyce says, still not sure what this is. And then Sarah says, it's a bank. So there's a little slot for your coins there. So a dollar at a garage sale, sold in less than a month for $175. This thing's small, easy to ship, it's not gonna break, and it just looks cool. So some collector bought this for, maybe they collect coin banks, or maybe they collect Goodyear st stuff, or maybe they collect um, whatever this thing is. Um, you know, some collector bought that. Okay, Lynette, who I had the pleasure of meeting in Orlando at my event, so she was telling me about this sale she, because she saw this on another video on my channel about the Hidden Mickeys, and she lives outside of Orlando, so more of that kind of stuff is going to be down in her area. But this was uh, 69 cents, sold in two days for $175. And it is the elusive Hidden Mickey Bear. Um, there's all different kinds of these so this one was the yellow princess bear 12 inches pre Duffy waffle fabric so if you don't know what a hidden Mickey is the if you look at the foot uh, well if it's in a couple places the foot has what well, you know the paw there but it's also like a Mickey Mouse shape on the foot and on the face the face is actually the Mickey Mouse ears if you look here at the outline around the eyes and the nose. So a hidden Mickey is just what Disney does to make finding Mickey Mouse shapes fun. You know, they may have it in the the tile mosaic in the shower. They have them in the, the uh, concrete and the sidewalks. They have them hidden all over the park. Like, um, it's a fun game to like find the hidden Mickeys. But they also make these stuffed animals that have, um, that are called hidden Mickeys. And these are highly collectible. A lot of times they go to Japan. They can sell for several hundred dollars. Um, 
So this is definitely one of those um, be on the lookout items are these hidden Mickeys. So long story short, Lynette bought this at Goodwill for 69 cents and it sold in two days for 175 and Lynette's a newer seller. She, she was like so excited about this sale. She couldn't believe she had found one that was valuable. And um, so, you know, that's got her hooked, hooked on eBay. <laughs> Okay, and on to Jerry, who I am working with to figure out how we can do an interview, and we're working on getting our schedules synced up. May not be till after the first of the year, because it's a busy time of year for everybody. So, he bought this Sony Walkman, new in package, at a yard sale. It cost $15, sold in just a few days for $150. Love me some 10 times profit. Yep, absolutely. So, this is another what you might call dead tech item. This is a little Sony Walkman radio cassette player, water resistant. Well, that, that does not look like dead tech. That looks like, um, that looks current. So I think the fact that it's, well, no, it's a cassette player. It's hard to know if that's like old new stock or, um, I don't know if they're still making cassette players, but anyway, <laughs> you just never know what you might see at a garage sale, so pick it up. Um, and what did he say? $15 and sold for $150 in just a few days. Okay, and here's Jerry again. This is another Sony new in package find, a micro cassette recorder. It was $3 at a flea market. After five weeks, accepted a best offer of $210. Anytime I can get 70 times profit, I'm good with that. I'm going to agree with you on that, Jerry. Uh, 70 times profit is, uh, is good margins. And you know, you're not going to get that on Amazon. Um, I have a lot of conversations with people about why don't I sell on Amazon? Or I did sell at one point and then I don't anymore. And it's because for me, I enjoy this process of finding these things for such small investments that you can sell for so much money and you just can do it over and over and over again. Um, yes, retail arbitrage seems more efficient on the front end. You know, when you go to uh, whatever stores, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, those kind of places and scan stuff with your phone and look up what you think it might sell for and it's not really an exact science. Um, it's all based on human decision making whether you want to try to resell it at those market conditions or not but I did that for five years from 2009 to 2014 and it was very much of a rat race and trying to stay ahead of the curve and figure things out and then other people would figure them out and then the prices would drop because the market became too saturated and I just didn't enjoy all of that um, you know the rat race part of it I enjoy eBay for this for what this video is about is finding these things you can flip for so much profit and you have to enjoy the hunt if you don't this this is not going to work for you um, you have to enjoy looking and figuring out and taking some risks um, somebody told me that they think eBay is like gambling well not really because you make educated decisions and you always have a safety net of can I sell this for at least what I bought it for plus 20% to cover all your fees so it's not gambling it's educated it's decision making it's um, you know you're you're using your brain to do this you're not just throwing dice or being dealt cards at a blackjack table um, but back to my commentary about Amazon I just didn't enjoy it anymore you know people say why did you quit Amazon that seems to be the thing and it's um, I just didn't enjoy it, it wasn't fun anymore and that's my mission with eBay is you know, I'm not out to make a million dollars. Um, yeah, that would be great. I love making money, but my objective is to build a business I love, to make money doing something I enjoy, to live comfortably, um, to be able to pay my bills on time, and um, to not have to work for somebody else. So eBay does that for me. Okay, sorry, Jerry, I hijacked your sale there with my little commentary, but um, 
I love it when people find stuff new in the package like this and sell it for so much money because hey that flea market person who gave it to you for three bucks if they only knew <laughs> but that's okay eBay is not for everybody all right then we've got Michelle here purchased from another seller that was relocating out of state I paid two dollars and fifty cents in April sold this week which this is in September for two hundred and fifty dollars my biggest sale to date Ellen Tracy size 8 medium women's black suede leather ruffle trench coat neat that is a neat item um, Molly says Ellen Tracy isn't that a pretty common brand Michelle answered with uh, not positive on that I have several pieces of the brand in my store I bought them all as a lot um, so something like this that is a long coat leather or suede or cashmere it doesn't matter what the brand is what's important here is what it's made of and so it's it's not always you know when you see this brand buy it it's okay we got to step back and look at a few things here what's it made of what color is it what size is it um, and that's what my thrift shopping lists are going to help you with because you can't just narrow this down to when you see this brand buy it just like Chico's um, there's a whole science to that I've, I've got a course on Chico's clothing which ones do you buy which Chico's has several lines of clothing they've got um, private edition they've got travelers they've got Chico's design Zenergy weekenders you know all these different lines so how do you know which Chico's thing to buy and what colors do better than others what styles so don't just go by the brand because you're going to end up with a lot of inventory that doesn't sell. You've got to be more choosy and pick things that are going to be your highest profit items. Okay, we've got Travis here. Bought for $10 at a local antique store and sold for $220 within four days of being listed. Let's see what this is. Okay, I remember this. This was like a um, direct marketing brand, Nikon. I don't th know if that's how you say it, or Nikon. I think it comes out of Japan. Um, I knew people that sold this stuff. Um, you know, it's like Pampered Chef, Mary Kay, where you have the parties and you, it's direct sales. Anyway, Magnetic Body Energizer. Brand new in box, magnetic therapy device. So brand new in box is your red flag there to pick it up and look at it further. $10 and sold it for $220 within four days. Okay, we've got KC here. And KC always has interesting commentaries and interesting stuff to teach us. Uh, local large business has annual parking lot yard sale for employees to sell all of their junk. Also had a small section of their own and bought three of these for $10 each. This is the second one he sold. So let's see what it is. Carvin, a uh, bunch of numbers, inbox, professional rack mounted amplifier. So some kind of amplifier, musical thing. And he sold it for 300 bucks and he bought it for 10. This is the second one he sold. All right, Casey has another one. $2 at thrift store, sold for $105 with free shipping in five days. And this is a some kind of knee brace. So here you go, another health item. Pay attention to these. I mean, this, this wouldn't really creep me out if I saw this at a garage sale or a thrift store or a estate sale. It's a brace. Um, you know, more personal items might creep you out to resell them, you know, like gross you out kind of thing I don't want to like name all of them but you know what I'm talking about some medical devices can be um, used in personal areas that you may not want to bring into your home so here is the knee brace and it's called Dawn Joy and there you go maybe somebody had knee replacement surgery or whatever um, Although this looks like it might be for after you have ACL surgery, which um, I've had like four of those in my life, and uh, <laughs> that brace looks familiar. Um, it's just a neoprene hinged knee brace. 
and he sold it for 105 bucks. It was two dollars. So um, maybe I should make one of these printable lists with all these medical things on it because like how would you know if you've never used that before? You wouldn't even know what it was. Okay, KC has another one. I do very well with these and find so many where I live. $12 thrift store annual ski swap and sold for $100 with free shipping in a couple of weeks. And this is a Heli Hansen. That's a good brand. Um, very expensive brand of ski, snow apparel, and accessories and equipment stuff. And 99 well, 100 bucks basically. And it's a snowsuit. And Casey is out in Park City, Utah, so he's got access to a lot of the ski stuff. He's also a ski instructor, so he knows what it is. So um, he's leveraging what he knows to build his reselling business. And let me just comment on that real quick. Um, I talk to a lot of retired people, you know, baby boomers, and they're trying to figure out a online business and they seem to think like they have to figure out what to sell like you know what's the hot thing or how do I know what to sell and if you're in that age group and unsure about getting into eBay um, you need to um, redirect your thinking on that because if you're 60 70 years old that means you have 60, 70 years of life experiences to draw on to build your business around. So think about what hobbies you do. What are you interested in? What do you collect? What do you like to do? And use your knowledge that you already have about those things to build your eBay business. So, you know, if you're an avid fisherman, and you know all about fishing lures and rods and reels and equipment you know all the, the tackle all that stuff and you love fishing then build your business around that you don't have to learn the latest fashion or what the Millennials are doing or what should I order from China no learn all you have to do is learn the eBay part because you already know whatever it is you're passionate about that's your hobby or um, you know an interest and build it around that you you uh, baby boomers know a lot more than you give yourselves credit for you can walk into an estate sale and you know what's valuable you know what decade these things came from um, the Millennials they don't a lot of the stuff they've never seen they've never heard of um, you know my kids who are 22 and 24 um, the only phones they know are, are cell phones. They never saw phones mounted on the wall and, you know, rotary phones and push-button phones and all that kind of stuff. Their generation doesn't know that stuff because they didn't live it. But if, if you're older, a baby boomer, Gen Xer, um, you are already so well equipped to be a reseller of vintage items. You just don't realize it because the... Um, you know the mentality out there on the internet and on YouTube is that you've got to go out and buy all this stuff you know you've got to be selling the trending thing what's the hot thing and um, I just that's not true at all and and this these videos I do show you that um, it's what you know and what you can learn but use your life experiences to build your your eBay business so it's just gonna flow it's just gonna be easy okay um, Let's see what else we've got. April here, three dollars at Goodwill. Took about two months to sell. Sold for one hundred and thirty-nine ninety-nine. So let's see what she's got here. Okay, there it is. See original listing. And here it is, the Baby Morgan Blanket, which I've got a video about that, so check it out. The link is above there. Vintage Baby Morgan Blanket, blue-green. She's got the measurements. Um, it's new in the package. And she bought it for $3 and sold it for $140. And let's see what the replies are on here. 
Um, yeah, these are on my bucket list. I look for them everywhere. Yes, baby Morgan blankets um, can sell for a lot of money. Then we've got April again. Paid $3 at estate sale. Took about six months to sell. Sold for $100 plus shipping. And it looks like some kind of vintage sweater. Vintage 80s. JD Sun Valley men's small sweater. Neon wool Gore-Tex. Okay, so here's the tag. Um, that's a vintage tag there. And Gore-Tex is a keyword you should know. Um, that's expensive to make, but it's uh, insulating material that you're going to see in jackets and coats and ski wear and stuff like that. Also, this is very cool looking. That is very 80s looking. Um, so people just love vintage 80s clothing. So that was $3 and sold for $100. Okay, we've got KC again. $6 garage sale last Saturday. Sold for $152 plus shipping. Sold on seven-day auction. Could have definitely made a lot more rebuilding the sets, but opted for the quick flip this time as my plate is currently quite full. Yes, KC, how can you even have any more Legos in your home is my question. Um, so there it is. Star Wars 5... He's got all the lot numbers, the item numbers, whatever, the Lego numbers. $152, $6 at a garage sale. So there you go. Amy found this in the office supplies section at a thrift store. Paid $10.39. I love to sew, so I knew what it was. Did some research and found out they are out of production. Sold in a week for $257. So there again, we've got somebody who is using their life knowledge of something they were interested in sewing they recognize this product and knew what it was she paid 10 bucks for it and it sold for 257 dollars there you go Shelby bought at Salvation Army for a dollar fifty sold in two weeks for hundred and forty seven dollars let's see what this is It looks like some kind of handbag. Brahmin glossy pink light red croco leather shopper tote shoulder bag purse. Got all her keywords in there, that's for sure. Um, so this is, I was going to show you the logo on it. That's another thing on my list is putting together a shopping list for you that has all of the quote, okay to resell end quote handbags um, because there are a lot that aren't faked that still sell for good money and those are the kinds I'll pick up to sell I'm not doing coach I'm not doing Louis Vuitton um, I don't do those high-end ones because there's too many fakes and you can get in trouble even if it's real your account can be flagged so um, I'm gonna be putting that together I have so much stuff on my list to make of lists my list of lists um, so, yeah, it's hard to be me when my head is exploding with ideas, but, you know, somebody's got to do it. So Shelby bought that for $1.50 and sold for $147. And here we have Shelby again, paid $10, sold for $105, sorry, $145 in a week. Let's see what that is. Okay, Value Tales, 27 book lot. They're called Value Tales by Ann Spencer Johnson, first edition, 1979. So that's interesting. I've never even heard of this. Interesting. What a nice set of books. And $10 sold for $145 in a week. Okay, then we've got Kimberly, paid $10, sold in less than two weeks for $100. I think this is going to be fragrances again yes vintage opium I've sold that um, Yves Saint Laurent looks like um, spell check got you there because it changed it to your vet but that's okay because it's happened to me before and spell check can get you sometimes <laughs> um, I've had it change anthropology to anthropologist on my listing and you 
you feel like kind of foolish when you find it later like oops I didn't do that spell check did it autocorrect um, anyway it's Yves Saint Laurent eau de toilette four ounce opened okay so this was opened but it was still full and she sold it for a hundred bucks paid ten dollars for it all right then we've got Jody paid ten dollars at a state sale sold today for one seventy four ninety five with free shipping took about a month to sell what is it a lot of six new dr. ho triple action cleanse now this is like the third time I've heard of this dr. ho guy so put that on your list until I can put it on my list to give you um, dr. ho stuff seems to sell pretty well and I don't is, I don't know if this is an infomercial or what this is but obviously a brand to look for so ten dollars sold for hundred seventy four ninety five looks like some kind of um, you know like dietary cleanse like colon cleanse liver cleanse something like that okay a few more to go we've got Laura who bought this for five dollars at a yard sale and sold for asking price in two weeks after having someone offer me a hundred dollars sometimes it's best to hold out and this is a guitar thing <laughs> Tronicle tune automatic robot tuners guitar Fender Tele Strat Chrome so a very specialized guitar thing and she sold it for $220 so she did her research she knew what she could get for it and she waited so five dollars at a yard sale turned into two hundred twenty dollars in a couple of weeks not too shabby and here we've got superstar Mark Sherrill who paid a dollar at an estate sale sold for hundred twenty dollars plus seven dollars shipping Bath and Body Works men's woodland daily refresher spray eight ounce bottle this has got to be another one that's discontinued because why else would it sell for so much so more evidence that knowing your discontinued items knowing that they're even out there being aware to look for them is huge so a dollar and sold for hundred and twenty dollars so again you just never know because somebody could be a Bath and Body Works I don't want to say freak I want to say uh, junkie <laughs> um, and just have all this stuff in their house and they have a garage sale or they have to move and so they're um, you know downsizing their stuff and all this comes out some of the ones mixed in there could be discontinued and sell for these crazy prices so good for you Mark We've got Mark again who has uh, he paid seventy dollars at an estate sale sold for a hundred dollars plus four dollars shipping Let's check this out vintage Boy Scout patch yes these are great um, people collect these also 70 sorry 70 cents at an estate sale sold for a hundred dollars so absolutely um, you know collectors will pay crazy prices for stuff they want for their collection and you just you can't base what you would do on the same playing field as what a collector would do because we all spend our money on different things we all value different things and that's just the world we live in so the way I look at it is hey great I'm gonna be a person out there that's finding these things and providing them for these collectors and they're gonna pay me to do it so yay me Helen paid a dollar at a yard sale down the road seven day auction two hundred ten dollars and fifty cents made in China bumblebee is the brand went back to China international shipping and she gave me an A plus 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 feedback I bought it because it was so beautiful and cool so let's see what this is she paid a dollar for this it's a vintage golden bee Chinese white silk embroidered jacket so Helen just went with her gut it was hundred percent silk it just looked interesting it looked um, you know like a really nice item that somebody would buy and she went for it for a dollar I mean how even if she ended up selling it for ten dollars she's not gonna be out any money so it went for two hundred and ten dollars 
Okay, Angela paid $8 at a thrift store, sold for $129.99. And I'll bet it's the scrubbing bubbles thing that we've been seeing. Let's see if this is going to open here. Yep, the scrubbing bubbles. I wonder if it's just a refill. Let me get to the original item here. Okay, it is the whole thing. It is the um, dispenser and one refill bottle. So that's what this looks like, the automatic shower cleaner. $129 and she paid $8 for it at a thrift store. So whoever had it and donated it didn't know it was worth anything or didn't care or didn't want to do the work to get the money. But all I can say is some people really don't want to clean their showers if they're buying this thing for a hundred bucks to do it for them. So there you go. And we got Casey again, paid twelve fifty at a springtime half price boutique sale since it was a winter item. Sold for four hundred dollars with free shipping after almost three summer months listed. Montclair is often faked, so be sure to do good due diligence. So this is a vest, a puffer vest, and he sold it for $400 and it cost $12.50. We've got Mark again, paid $8 at a garage sale, sold for $120 plus $43 shipping. And yes, these sell very well. These vintage webbed outdoor lawn chairs and especially the ones with the rockers. And this one looks to be in great condition. It's got the wooden handles, the wooden arms, sorry, and um, it's on the rocker and all of the webbing looks to be in great condition. And these aren't really that hard to ship. You just fold it flat, wrap it in bubble wrap, and then you can get like a really big moving box and cut it so it's flat. So it makes like a, a cardboard envelope kind of thing around the chair. Um, I'm sure there's videos about that. So $8 sold for $120. Then we've got Jen who paid $6.96 at a thrift store while on vacation. Sold for $117. Had no idea it would sell for so much. I just saw dimensions and picked it up. So I think we had one of these in another video recently, but that's that needlework again. If you guys aren't looking at this, um, start looking at it and check out my course about it which will help enlighten you on this because um, you know when you learn this stuff you're like I had no idea so you just don't know what you don't know and you're out there in these thrift stores anyway so maximize your time so here's the thing and $117 she paid $7 for it and we've got Carrie Paid $4 at an out-of-town Goodwill. Took best offer of $210 after about two months. So here we go. This is St. John. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. Ralph Lauren, black label. Silver gray shearling fur vest. So we've got a lot going on there. We've got, um, it's Ralph Lauren black label. That's very important. It's made of this shearling which is the, um, you know, it's from a sheep. It looks like it's leather on top of that. It's very interesting looking. Um, so it's got a lot of factors that make it expensive. Let's see if she says what it's made of there. Um, yeah, it's leather. So it says dry clean by leather experts. So. I, you know, I would have picked this up probably no matter what brand it was because of the leather and the shirling there. Um, so $4 and sold for $210. All right, we've got Casey again, wrapping it up. <laughs> $19 for an entire set of these dishes at a garage sale. Sold just the salt and pepper shakers in less than one month for the full asking price of $139.97 even though I certainly would have taken lower offers. I've sold many pieces from this set, but this is the cream of the crop. And let's see what this is. Oh, Villaroy and Bach. Well, that's what it's pulling up. Okay. Villaroy and Bach French Garden 
Fluorence salt and pepper shakers, four inch. And those sold for $139.97. So you paid 19 for those. So there you have it, guys. Um, would love your comments below. Keep thrifting, keep just keep going. All this stuff is out there. There's more and more coming, and the more you do this, the better you're gonna get at it. Practice. I don't want to say practice makes perfect because you never there's never perfect in eBay because you're always evolving you're always learning more stuff you're gonna learn some new stuff later today you're gonna to learn more stuff tomorrow it's just gonna keep going so keep working at it and um, post your comments below please subscribe to my channel if you have not already and give this video a thumbs up if you like it and a thumbs down if you don't have a great day on eBay bye